Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and with the seeming unveiling of Sigma as Overwatch's 31st hero coming soon, the question remains, who are they? Where are they from? What is their affiliation? And what kind of hero could they be? Well, in this video, I'm going to run through a bit of my own speculation. We'll get our tinfoil hats on, a few theories that are commonplace and popular at the moment, discuss them, pros and cons and similar. Time codes in the description to skip. If you want to see how Sigma was sort of semi-accidentally unveiled, I think, take a look at my previous video. However, as a quick follow-up, there was a tweet from the Overwatch Mexico World Cup committee account saying that they had shared images from the official Overwatch Spanish Mexican blog. This was retweeted by the Overwatch Mexico account, so they've effectively owned this. We must think that Sigma is coming and Hero 31, I think. So, time for some theories and speculation. Now, do share your theories and speculation in the comments below. I'm gonna go through this in kind of stages, talking about different bits as we go, who Sigma could be, where they might be from, what their affiliation might be, and maybe what we could speculate from the name Sigma and maybe the kind of the look of the chap. All right, so firstly, who could he be? Well, we know it's a he, obviously from Jeff's dev update not too long ago, saying the next hero would be a he. Now, I feel most likely, for reasons I mentioned in a previous video, we're gonna be getting a tank, and I think if it's gonna be a tank, therefore it's most likely gonna be the Talon tank. A quick recap as to why of all of the options we know that Hero 31 isn't going to be Sojin, isn't going to be, and we knew this already, wasn't going to be the Junkertown Queen, wasn't going to be Echo. The Talon Tank was one that has been very, very popularly received by the community in the past or thought of. And then this one hasn't been mentioned so much recently by people asking Jeff and the devs questions. And it's not really been mentioned a lot in other ways. Like everyone always asks about the other ones. No one's asked about the Talon Tank for a while. Combine that with the rough pattern and of course the change to 2 2 roll lock and roll queue that is coming up. If you have a look at the balance of the heroes, chunk of DPS heroes, chunk of damage heroes, with Brigitte being tweaked in the balance patch on the PTR to be more supporty and more healy rather than her middle point that would work well in a non 2 2 roll lock kind of composition. Tanks seem to be up next for someone to fill in and I think that Sigma is going to be in there and therefore a talent tank would be a likely option. Now Sigma, well if they're a talent tank and this is the prism I'm looking at it through but I will try and talk about some other perspectives as well. Having a look at that frown, having a look at the big black bulky sort of neck piece, the big sort of neck collar he has around there, I would describe him as a little bit, not in a bad way, but color coded for our convenience. You know, not many heroes you meet initially have a huge frown and are wearing a big black collar and turn out to be good straight away. So if Sigma is a Talon character, what other character spaces could we explore in Talon for, for who they are? Well, we've got moral ambiguity galore in Talon, right? Uh, Doomfist probably trends more on the evil side, strengthening humanity through conflict and sort of aspiring for this greater goal. Moira advancing humanity through science, regardless of ethics. Widowmaker kind of brainwashed into the evil cause. Reyes, Reaper, well, still to be determined. We are not 100% sure why he joined Talon and indeed the reasons why he is still there. A lot of people liking a double agent type theory. In Talon, we also have the, let's call them innocent or the sort of victims decisions of circumstance and then reformed uh, not quite a heel to face turn but people like Baptiste who sort of joined because they didn't feel at the time they had huge amounts of options they realized what the organization was and then kind of dropped out and did their own thing we then have people like Malgra and Wen who are sort of card carrying so far in that they're not coming out kind of talent type members now what does that leave space for if you're exploring different characters within Talon. I think personally there's room for, I'm not gonna call it true evil, uh, but maybe sort of a sort of true evil or accidental evil. Uh, someone who hasn't been created evil. Widowmaker was kind of brainwashed and made evil, if you want to call Talon evil. A Baptist is kind of reformed. Talon was always against his nature, but circumstances, etc. So could we have some kind of, I'm gonna call it roughly a, a Junkrat style, chaotic character in Talon. Now we do have Sombra as well, who is 100% in it for her own ends and morally ambiguous in terms of what she does. She does what she needs to, she manipulates who she needs to to get what she needs. Let's not forget Sombra. But I'm talking about a Junkrat style of chaotic. Maybe a few things going on psychologically or not, that's how maybe they've ended up there. Um, or could there be a pure, pure evil character? That's not something that we have 100%. The closest thing I guess to it is Doomfist, but you could still argue him perhaps one way or another. Let's go on the other side of the coin and say, right, well, if he's not perhaps involved with talent, could he still be some kind of chaotically evil or otherwise character out for his own goals and ends? I mean, I, I don't think he looks sort of visually in terms of the visual cues and character designs as an immediately good character, but who knows? And as a final little thought, um, around the world, 
We know that Doomfist was broken out of jail, out of a Helix security, top security style installation by Talent. Now, I love the thought personally of an Arkham Asylum style breakout where everyone's breaking out and suddenly we have uh, loads of bad guys or loads of criminals or loads of people of, of various nasty persuasions being free in the world. Maybe some of them are to do with Talon, maybe there aren't. Now, presumably that's not the only Helix security facility in the world. And remember that, you know, in the sort of breaking down of Talon in Overwatch's work, they must have locked up quite a lot of bad people. And whether they're to do with Talon or not, uh, or dangerous people, uh, maybe this guy could tie into that kind of somehow. I, I just love the idea of like an Arkham Asylum style break when Doomfist was released from this maximum security Helix facility, Helix uh, Securities facility, the company that Fara works for. And who else was released? Who else got away um, in that breakout? Uh, I just think that there's a really cool sort of opportunity story hook there. And we can't forget that there are probably many dangerous people in the world who, whether they were or weren't anything to do with Talon in the past, have thrived in the insecurity of the last six, seven years of the Overwatch timeline, certainly since Overwatch was uh, disbanded. Okay, that's a few of my thoughts about who Sigma could be. So where could they be from? Now, this is not only geographic, but just sort of they're, they're setting their grounding as a character as well. Now, I'm quickly going to talk about Numbani and the Sigma on Numbani, as as soon as I released my video the other day, a lot of people were excited having a look around and saying, yeah, there's a Sigma on Numbani. Yes, yeah, Sigma has been there for a very, very long time. The Sigma Omnic Couture fashion style house that I'm showing you around now. Now, my personal feeling on this one, uh, the People like the thought or saying, oh, you know, Sigma's a fashion designer. This is this must be Sigma. Sigma equals Sigma. And that is a very, you know, it's something we can't ignore because it's there and it's the exact same name. Personally, I feel that I don't think it fits with a talent tank if you're going with that theory. Let's say, for argument's sake, it was his company or his alias. Um, you can certainly make a story that takes someone who's in charge of a fashion boutique as being a front for whatever they really do. They could tie that in if they wanted to. It's like Maximilian's uh, ownership of the distillery in Havana. Just say it's a front company, but then this is my point. Like if this is anything to do with Sigma, or if Sigma is a hero, then why would you take on an alias that's exactly the same as one of your front companies that you own. Uh, would you, being a bad guy, and this is of course me speculating, they are on the, let's say, the morally ambiguous to sort of talent side of things. That would be like Dr. Octopus calling his or her in, into the Spider-Versus company, like, you know, Dr. Octopus Inc. And having a bit of fun with this, it would be like Tony Stark deciding, you know what, I'm not Iron Man, I'm Stark Industries man, and I will promote Stark Industries through the wonder of my Iron Man technology and suit. Uh, okay, although plenty of superheroes have names close to their abilities and real identities, but it's, it's that kind of branding. I don't know, I, I just struggle a little bit personally with seeing Sigma being directly related to this Sigma. Uh, the second thing I think about this is that we already have a story. Let's say that Sigma was really a fashion designer. It was his company or something like that. We already have a story uh, in Numbani or set around Numbani of a person who's run a business that's probably gone into disgrace with their eventual involvement in crime. And that person is a Kande Ogundimi, of course, Doomfist, intelligent, charismatic, expanding the business of his family's prosthetic technology company and then using that tech. So yeah, we have Numbani, Blizzard love Numbani, and it's seen a lot of story developments over the three plus years that Overwatch has been alive. But would they then set everything real close to here? Remember, of course, that Sigma being set in Numbani as well, it's one of the few cities in the world where Omnix and humans live sort of very, very closely together, coexist, and it's probably an exception rather than the rule from what we've been told in Overwatch lore so far. There's a lot more, as what we've seen, conflict uh, between Omnix and humans or stresses in various cities around the world thus far than there is perhaps, you know, unity and harmony. So I'm not saying that Sigma is only a Nimbani style chain. I fully expect maybe there are branches around the world in various places. It doesn't mean that a Sigma, if they owned the business, had to live or had to be from Numbani or the surrounding area indeed. But I just think that within Numbani, we've already got the Doomfist story and we've already got the Orisa and Efi story. If you then link it too much to sort of Numbani as well, then maybe we're just sort of stacking things on top of each other when we could be exploring other areas. And speaking of other areas, let's just have a quick think while we're here about where they could be from, about geography of Overwatch areas and where they've been from. Now, thanks to Syncout, who in mid-2018 actually shared this on Reddit, and I've put the link in the description below, just showing geographically where all of the Overwatch heroes 
come from? And of course, we've added Ash from the USA as of BlizzCon 2018, and then Batiste from the Caribbean and Haiti. So if we have a look at this map, a lot of places in the world have been visited and picked out already for Overwatch heroes, with the exception maybe of um, Southeast Asia. I'm talking about outside of Australia, Japan, Korea, more sort of like the Philippines and Malaysia. It would be cool to see someone from there perhaps at some point. Canada, I think, will happen. I mean, sort of Lucio might have been Canadian at one point. South Africa, having a look at the map, these places stand out. So I think a pretty good candidate outside of these places could be like, you know, maybe South Africa or maybe actually Europe. Um, he looks Caucasian, so there are certainly some options there, both from places that haven't already been visited. He seems a Caucasian chap, so I'm pretty sure that Blizzard wouldn't be too backwards in coming forwards and dropping back to a continent that's already been visited. I mean, Europe, Europe or Russia, that could be an option. Could he look a little bit European to you of some description? Plenty of countries in Europe that could be visited as well. So there we go. I think Europe, maybe Russia could be an interesting bet. Maybe South Africa as well. Is he Canadian? I don't know. But yeah, you know, pick one of those kind of places, I think. Now, last but by no means least, the what. What is he and how would he actually play? Now, I feel he's a tank. He looks a bit tanky to me, and obviously we could pan down off of his neck headshot there and see that he's a really skinny guy, but I think he's quite thick set. So with 222 roll lock and roll Q just being announced the other day and on the PTR already, tanks and supports, as I said, need a little bit of filling in. And I think that a tank would fit and sit in the rough pattern of Overwatch Hero Laces in terms of how they space these out. So let's jump to another pattern that I always love, the description of Overwatch's cast as being soldiers, scientists, adventurers, and oddities. Now those are pretty large buckets that you can put people in, but I think it's a nice way of dropping through different kinds of people. So let's do this for fun, right? We've got Batiste and Ash, let's say they're soldiers. You could say that maybe Batiste is an adventurer, I don't know. Wrecking Ball is certainly an oddity. You could put them as an adventurer, but I think that Hammond is probably an oddity. Brigitte, well, an adventurer with Reinhardt, maybe a scientist, you know, engineer. Moira, certainly a scientist. Doomfist, he's definitely a soldier. And Arisa is also an oddity if we're working backwards in hero releases. Sorry, Arisa, you're my number one McDonald's tank at the moment with a Florida Mayhem skin on. Now, my little theory on that, if you have a little look at that, we could have an adventurer or a scientist due to me. Now, does Sigma look more like an uh, adventurer? Could be or a scientist to you. I reckon we could have a scientist to you. And if you tie this in, a lot of people have been looking in terms of theories, finally, at Sigma, at the symbol, where it's used, what it represents, and so on and so forth. Now, Sigma is used a lot, um, as well as its sort of Greek origins as a character, is used extensively in mathematic and scientific disciplines. In maths, it's used to represent standard deviation. Uh, broadly speaking, the distribution of data points around an average. So like, you know, how wide the distribution of values is, basically. Now, in science, it's actually got some really interesting applications and uses. Uh, sigma is a class of uh, heavy subatomic particles in particle physics. Um, it's used uh, as part of microscopic cross-sections in nuclear and particle physics. Um, it's used in the definition of self energy in particles, in condensed matter physics and quantum field theory, and then also used as part of alphabets in linguistics and computer science. So an example of this in action, now you might know the CERN laboratory in Switzerland when the Higgs boson particle was discovered. Uh, the probability of them being correct, uh, the probability of them observing such an extreme result if nothing was happening was defined in terms of five sigmas. So a one in three million five hundred thousand chance that they hadn't discovered anything effectively. So basically a confidence level. So I will leave you with this. That's a very exciting idea. Now if we went with a scientist then there's a lot of relationships between the you know the use of the word sigma and the phrase sigma and sigma is a concept as well in physics and particle physics. So how about a tank that somehow manipulates particles or a physicist? Uh, you know, it could be a nuclear physicist, could be a particle physicist, many different kinds of physicists. Um, Sigma is involved in quantum field theory. Could it be something to do with quantum fields? Now, of course, this would also give him a lot of story hooks into the story. He could be tied in with Zarya, you know, um, and Graviton stuff. It could be Symmetra, you know, with her sort of hard light barriers, hard light technology. And as a scientist, maybe Moira, Winston, May, Mercy, though I'm kind of calling them like the science crew. Um, Mercy, you can stick on the medical science side of things. All depends on what kind of abilities he has and what field he specializes in. He can be a scientist in many, many different ways, but I feel that science could potentially fit just because of the use of Sigma 
as a name, unless he's of course a mathematician in some way, or an accountant, <laughs> maybe uh, accountancy, although Sigma is used as a term in some kinds of sort of accounting. Uh, yeah, maybe not quite so exciting, a weaponized accountant, but that's what everyone wanted Maximilian to be in a sense, right? And finally, of course, computer science, of course an interesting one, and uh, yeah, as a computer scientist, maybe uh, Sigma could come in there as well. Now, very, very finally, I always, uh, when as soon as I saw Sigma, I thought I'd look at acronyms and see what kind of acronyms there are out there for Sigma and could it stand for anything that could be relevant. So the two that I found that were best were Software, Industrialized Generation and Maintenance uh, Assistance and Aids, so Sigma. Um, so yeah, maybe a computer science -y term. And then I like this one from the University of Birmingham uh, a couple of years ago, Studies of Industrial Gravity Measurement Applications. So there you go. Uh, we've got a computer science one and we've got more of a one uh, involved in the measurement of gravity there, SIGMA as an acronym. So maybe, I don't know, a scientist feels good to me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. So those are my theories. Those are my thoughts on various things that people are thinking. How about yours? Could they be Greek? Do you think there's any sort of connection with Numbani? What do you think SIGMA looks like to you? Do you think talent tanks a thing? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please do throw a like, subscribe. It really, really helps me out as always. And do check out all of my other videos shared here, law, interaction, voice signs, and more on Overwatch. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon, without whom uh, my videos would not have existed at many points over the last few years. And if you'd like to see how you can support the channel from just a dollar pound euro a month, check out patreon.com forward slash hammy. A lot of pilots of Overwatch and other content coming up there in the coming weeks. So do get involved, uh, be it on this channel, or if you want to there with having a look and telling me what kind of stuff you'd like to see in future. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.